Greetings, and welcome to episode 15. In today's episode, we'll be discussing love. We'll also be discussing the difference between love and lust, and also intensity. So, if you were ever curious as to why you, you have difficulty giving or receiving love, stick around. So, let's get started. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, the L word, love. I'm not going to talk about what it means to me. I'm going to talk about what I've learned over the past 40 years of observation. And no, I wasn't always doing it right, even when I thought I was head over heels in love and could do no wrong and whatnot. And uh, it also helped me to understand the path and why it's always been taught in a certain way. It's done that way on purpose. The magical thought and thinking, it's, it's done like that on purpose. But we'll get into that a little bit further down in this video. But love. Let's discuss what we all used to believe, or some of you probably still do. But let's get into it. So, phase one. We're going to do this from a male point of view because I'm a male, and I don't know how the mechanisms work within a female. Just the energy is the same. Within a male, step one, the setting is unimportant. The only part at this point that's important is I just saw her. Wow. And that starts a chemical reaction in the body, and that feeling comes up. Everyone thinks that's love. That's not love. That is a chemical reaction caused by visual stimulation. Visual stimulation. Input received from the outside world. These are the chemicals that ensure the propagation of the species, and that's it. That's all. It's what gives you your initial motivation to seek out this other individual. Without which there would be no nurturing of anything of any sort. It would just be caveman, crack him on the head, drag him back, have your way, she goes, has a kid, and species. But let's backtrack a little bit to the chemical reaction. You have the chemical reaction causes the butterflies and the nervous and the, oh, oh dear Lord. <coughs> With any luck, she saw you and had the same reaction, or when she sees you, will have the same reaction. But there's a way to get that reaction after the fact if she doesn't have the reaction, and that takes, takes a lot of hard work to, to trigger the response. But a woman is ten times more likely to have the initial response be that emotional response, because women are more emotional creatures. Men are more logical creatures, traditionally. That's not to say that that's the way it works now, but traditionally, women are more emotional, men are more logical. It's not that the lines for that are being blurred nowadays, and I'm not even concerning homosexuality. I'm just concerning the, the, the gender roles within a relationship, one being strong, one being passive, one being logical one being emotional nowadays it's the lines are blurred I've seen strong super strong women I've seen logical women I've seen emotional men so but that actual aspect doesn't have to do with the initial creation of that spark of interest but that in that spark of interest is a chemical reaction it instills in you a feeling of intensity. That intensity is what drives you to create a dialogue with this other individual. In many cases, well, in my case, it would be a female. If you're a homosexual, it'll be, it'll be a dude. But still, you still have that contact, information, chemical reaction. 
we love that and we're supposed to love that because that helps with propagation of the species but where it goes from there you talk you make that's where the emotional bond comes in not through the visualization and chemical reaction but through the getting to know and you ever see, you ever wonder why the more you get to know each other the more you love each other it's because that's when it starts you're building that bond emotions are less emotions and more of a force a frequency that you tune into and the more you get to know this person the more you get to tune into that person but see now you're also experiencing all of this the intensity the chemical reaction and the budding of this frequency the budding into your connection to this force that you've associated with this person you, it's all going through the filter of your belief system your operating system 99.9999 percent of us by the time we reach this point where we're going through this process have crappy operating systems based on culture, cultural stimulation, uh, based on environmental factors, and based on pretty much advice from other broken operating systems <laughs> on what to do next and how it all works and blah, 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 blah. No one really knows because nobody really knows. And that's why nobody really knows. Nobody really knows because nobody really knows. You get your what love is from TV, but that's just a picture. It doesn't show how that person feels and that person's acting, so they don't really love that person. And then you have music, but according to music, sex is love. But we all know in our heart of hearts that it is not. So we're at the beginning of the journey. We've made it past the initial chemical reaction, we've made it past the butterflies, we've made contact, and we've got a first date. Oh, I'm jumping the gun. We got a drink or some coffee, and we got a first date. We got the digits, and we got a first date. Everything's going, in this scenario, nothing's going to fail, except for our interpretations except for our operating system that we're functioning with at this time. Date one, it's awesome. You get to know each other and there it goes. That's the start of that connection to that frequency that you have now blamed on this person. And that's what it is. I feel this because of them. That's, a, that's, that's blame. So, you don't need an excuse to feel any of your emotions. But that's what you're doing. You're opening this this frequency to this this power. That's what it is. It's it's an energy source. You're opening up to this energy because of this person. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing just because it's called blame or association or whatever you want to call it. It's not a bad thing. Date two, date four, date five. Now you're officially dating. And everything's going awesome for about the first year until you decide you want to move in together. And it doesn't matter at this point if you've been having sex or not because the sex actually enhances and reinforces not only the chemical reaction and the intensity, but it enhances the emotional connection. Around, the, around about the first year, Sex is still very frequent. Everything is still, you're still friends. But once you move in together, based on observ your own observation that you don't even realize you're observing, you just, you see yourself as just going through your day and you're in the room while these people are interacting, or you saw something on TV, or you heard some advice somewhere that didn't pertain to you then, but it's coming into play now. All these things are running in, the, these are programs that are running in the background, whether or not you're pulling them up or not. They're running in the background. It's all part of your operating system. They, even the things subconsciously are making up your beliefs. So now you're living together. And now I notice 
Does she really chew with her mouth open? We've been living together for a month now. So there's no getting away from this person. And they chew with their mouth open. And is that, is that her feet? <laughs> and don't, don't worry, she's doing the same thing. Or he, depending on your role. <laughs> They're doing the same thing to you. And these things that a month ago, before you moved in together, these things that didn't come into play because you hadn't been in that position to see them, they're coming into play now because now you can you you can see them. You're you're in there with that person. This begins the acclimation process where the two try to get acclimated to one another. This process lasts about I'm going to say about between five and seven years. That's why so many young marriages end before they get the five year mark because all these little irritations that before they could do no wrong. Oh, he kicked the puppy. He's our second day and I love him so much. You know what I mean? <laughs> they could do no wrong, but now, is that how she breathes? I, how come I never noticed that before? It's because you were holding your breath the whole time, so you, you didn't hear her breathing because you were low on oxygen. Just enough oxygen to create enough blood to get a heart on so you could take her home later. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're starting to figure out everything about her that annoys the fuck out of you. And she's doing the same thing. And nobody's saying nothing because, well, I don't want to rock the boat or make any waves. And now what you're doing now is is your operating system. is It's not going into default, but it's going to run one of the subconscious programs that so-and-so said this. Don't make waves. So-and-so said this. You don't want to hurt feelings. And also add to that that if you love them, you're not going to want to see them hurt or angry. So you allow all these behaviors to continue without questioning them or asking about them. And I'd say about the third year, the couple splits up. And in the process, the chemical reaction diminishes, the intensity diminishes and make no mistake that intensity is because of the chemical reaction and without that chemical reaction that can no longer form because now you have these moments that they block anything that causes you to is going to block that chemical reaction because that's how you choose your mate is that chemical reaction and that first look if you look at someone and say eh, you're not going to get that chemical reaction if you look at someone and say hoo -hoo, you're not going to get that chemical reaction so now you spend a month two months six months after you move in with this person and all you're doing is discovering things you don't like you're going to say hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, a lot and it's going to start blocking that release of chemicals which is going to start blocking that intensity and you think that well the love is is fading the love has died no 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 no. there's a difference between love and intensity if you look because every time you look at her as long as she's not breathing in and out eating or has her shoes on or it's just showered and her feet don't stink you look at her and whew, no intensity no chemical reaction just a swelling in the heart chakra and an intense connection to that force. But you don't see that because it doesn't compare to that intensity. That intensity is now. It's like the difference between sticking your hand in a fire and sitting down in a well-heated room. That's the difference between love and intensity. And people think that it doesn't burn anymore. So where's the love? Well, because you are in, you're used to that intensity. You don't even pay any mind to that ebb and flow that is that ocean. You're used to getting smacked around by the waves. You're not used to just that chill ride. Relatively speaking, love is the weaker force. But on relative terms, love is way more vast. It's like having 
10 million tons of something versus a pound, but the pound's in your hand. You, you understand? The pound is in your hand and it's now and it's happening now and it's, it is, it's, it's focused and it's, wow, it's, it's a driving force, that pound. But then you got 10,000 pounds just surrounding you constantly. You're sitting on it, standing on it, walking on it, walking through it, breathing it in and out. But you don't focus on that. You focus on what's in your hand. They say, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Not always. And see, that only applies to the what it meant to apply to is having a, one lady is better than, having one lady that's going to be there for years is, having, is better than having two ladies on the side. That's what that meant. It didn't mean having is better, having immediate gratification is better than having something more along the lines of longevity. So, now, the intensity's worn off, and it what you think has devolved into friendship, which a good relationship, that's all it is, is friendship. That intensity is what gets you started. And if you really love that person, that intensity comes back whenever you need it. I can guarantee you that. If you know what you're doing, and how to use that energy, that force, oh yeah, it'll come back. That intensity will come back whenever you need it. That chemical reaction will come back whenever you need it. <laughs> but because you don't recognize the love for what it really is, oh uh, yeah, you're still friends, but you're not together anymore. But you're always thinking, I wonder what if. I wonder what if. Because you still love each other. You just don't feel that intensity toward each other anymore. And see, any relationship that makes it through the, the acclimation process, that five to seven year process, is usually going to make it. Because what people don't realize is, while you're making your list of deal breakers that before weren't deal breakers, but now they're deal breakers, they're making their same list of deal breakers. You don't, you don't even contemplate that. And... You go to a psychologist, oh, what, what we have here is, is, it's an emotional issue that you have. You have daddy issues. It's not daddy issues. That's a completely different side effect when somebody is emotionally unstable. Completely different. Works completely different. They react almost violently. And not maybe hit you, but they'll become verbal possibly verbally abusive. They'll become more irritable mentally. Like if you don't stay on their page, where, where are you? Where are you going? Those are the issues. The abandonment issues. The mommy and daddy issues. And we're all broken crayons. Some of us more broken than others. I'm not going to lie. I'm a severely broken crayon. And the problem there is in the feeling like you don't deserve or are unworthy of that energy, of that force. I said love is a gift. Love isn't a gift. Love isn't something that you deserve or don't deserve. Love just is. Tune in or don't tune in. Whoever taught you that love is a reward wanted something from you and anyone that ever gave or took away love or the what's the word I'm looking for took away their uh, uh, the way they implied or showed that they cared about you if they can give and take that away from you to elicit a particular response from you that's not love that's not love at all. But you have to understand, if that's what you grew up with, you have to understand that. Look at the operating system that you're working with now. It's broken because of that. Imagine what they went through to get their broken operating system to go ahead and break yours and think it was okay. Love is unconditional. 
it just is you tune in or you don't okay first and foremost it's not about deserving it it's either you tune in or you don't you're thirsty have a glass of water it's not about whether you deserve a glass of water it is proven fact that the human cannot live without love in some form either hearing it seeing it or feeling it which is why we chase instant gratification because in a sense that's us loving ourselves enough to go chase something that feels good and it's something that feels good and we will do everything in our power to replace not having real love we'll go shopping we'll go eating we'll go become sex sex sexaholics sex addicts but we won't address the problem we'll just deal with the symptom deal with the symptom and yes and drug addiction also comes into play because you're trying to put back something that's missing what's missing is you not understanding that you don't need someone to blame to love they say love thyself the reason why they say that is because the way we think in our society today is that you can't love unless you have someone to love so love yourself love yourself enough to love yourself the whole way love yourself enough to get started on that particular journey so that you can look in the mirror and smile because that's a friend of yours you know what I mean that's what I mean love yourself enough to get started in the right direction and no it's not easy and simple but it's easy and simple it's that simple <laughs> it's like it's simple I have to get this 10 ton rock three feet over it's that simple it may not be easy to get that 10 ton rock three feet over but it's that simple I gotta get the 10 ton rock three feet over you'll think of something humans are very what's the word I'm looking for resourceful so our crayons are broken and we're running around with the how could you love me I love I I hate you don't leave me it's not even I hate you don't leave me what it what a lot what it amounts to is I could never be part of a club that could have me for a member because who wants a broken crayon but what you don't understand is they may look all well put together but there are very few unbroken crayons that I've ever met ever <laughs> and they may put up a good front but there's a crack or a break somewhere and you just don't see it because they got the see-through scotch tape <laughs> and you say I want someone to love me for me but you don't and you're telling the world that I want you're telling the universe this is what I want in a man or this is what I want in a woman and you speak your words only go so far it's gonna pick the universe picks up also on what you think of yourself and what your mate should be and it also picks up on how you feel and so you say to the universe I want someone that's just like me but you don't like you and then you get upset when they do and so and this is my experience they'll do everything in their power to make you like them not like them you get it they will do everything in their power to tear down the relationship to their lowest common denominator which is self-loathing in one form or another unconditional love says I love all the broken pieces no matter what I love your shadow as much as your light and I'm here and no matter how many times I've said it to no matter how many women they don't believe you it's too good to be true get away from me but don't leave but get away from me but don't leave but get away from me but don't leave how could you love me look at you without taking into account in the slightest bit that I could be feeling similarly not how could you love me but oh my god look what I have 
But they don't see that. They only see you and how they feel about you. And they can't believe that you love me. Why? I can't believe you love me. Why? Because I don't. And we're so much alike. Hmm. Now, that's the unable to receive. The unable to give is the, you make me this happy, but I'm going to hoard it because I don't know any better. Love is sharing. It isn't really love until you share it. So what I do, I love me. I love every single thing about me, and I share that. Because that's how I feel about whoever I'm with. I love every single thing about you. And don't get me wrong. There are things that I want to do away with, but I'm okay with them. I'm okay that they're still in the programming. They're still in the operating system. For now. Because once I get a hand on them, I'm yanking them out. And it's not that, oh, I hate that about me. It's that this part of me no longer serves me. So I'm dumping it. And not in a hateful manner, but uh, it's been nice. But, uh, you know, you're kind of screwing up what I got going on now. So could you move on down the road? <laughs> because let's face it. You're not going to walk up to your significant other and go, Ew, you're not going to change that. You're going to say, this part of you affects this part of me and it's detrimental to our relationship we need to work on these two factors how to give give to yourself it's like payday if you don't allot any money for yourself how can you share your money with your spouse if you spend all your money on bills or whatever it is Oh, got my stuff taken care of. Yep. And you might be doing it for them, which is even worse. Oh, I got your stuff taken care of. But there was nothing left for me. No, 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 no. Pay yourself first and then share it. Even if you only leave yourself a penny, share it. Because the hope is, and love is not a transaction, so you cannot guarantee you're going to get in return. Love isn't about what you get back. Love is about how you feel, not how they feel. That's faith. You're getting into faith then that they love you as much as they say they do. Because saying I love you isn't the question. I love you. Oh, I love you too. I love you. And if you don't get an answer, you've stated your piece. Love isn't about getting something in return. If you love someone, love them. Don't make it conditional. I love you unless you don't love me. No, 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 no. You love them. Period. End of the sentence. You love them. If they love you, they'll say it, they'll show it, you'll feel it. It'll glow in your house like an aura. Because that's two people releasing that energy in the house. Not the intensity, not the, not the chemical reaction, because that dies off. Not because you stop creating the chemicals, but because you've built up a tolerance to them. You've been together for how many years? You've made it through the reclamation process, and now you're starting to get to the big stuff, the meat and potatoes of your relationship, and why it's 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 not functioning the way you had originally planned. Because most people stop at the chemical reaction and the intensity, and they think that's what they're after, and when that dies off, they move on to the next one, and on to the next one, and on to the next one. Keep that intensity real, because with each person, it becomes strong again because for some reason the chemical it's got to be a different chemical every time because how do you build up a tolerance to that person but when you meet this person it's all brand new again that's just that's just a theory but it's the truth any scientist will tell you this is just a chemical reaction in the brain that's the physical response and that is a sensation not an emotion there is a difference there is a difference there is a difference. An emotion will not drive you to do crazy things. 
but an intense sensation will. The sensation that you're out of money. The sensation that you're out of your drugs. The sensation that you need a cigarette. But an emotion? I have never been moved to do anything foolish because of emotion. Except for maybe hate or anger. But like I said, these are energies. These are forces. And there's only two energies. There's love and there's fear. All of your good emotions stem from love. All of your negative emotions stem from fear. So when you say, I hate, I'm angry, I'm this, I'm that, all you're saying is, I'm experiencing fear in this way. And when you say, I'm happy, I'm, I'm feeling good, I'm blah, 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 all you're saying is, I'm experiencing love in this way. <laughs> Now, bear in mind that this is all going through your operating system. It's all going, being filtered. All this information is being filtered through your your your, your uh, operating system. So you're only going to see what your operating system allows you to see. And most of your programming comes from television. Other people's broken relationships that didn't work. But you're still going to pull advice from I don't know why. Your other, your own broken relationships. If you love, love completely and without conditions, let it flow. Not the sensation, not that intensity or the chemical reaction, the love. It is very powerful and can fix almost anything almost anything emotional spiritual even physical ails can be fixed with love if channeled properly whoo <laughs> all right well we're getting on to the 30 minute mark so I'm gonna go ahead and call it if you have any questions put them in the comments down below or hit me with a video response but yeah I really like this video uh, <laughs> if you enjoyed this video go ahead and click the like button favorite it if you want and if you would like to keep coming back and get more information or maybe you just like the sound of my voice go ahead and hit the subscribe alright but until next time you hang in there <laughs>